everybody. I'm Rick Fulbaum, and welcome to FoxNews.com Live. So glad you're with us on a Tuesday afternoon. And the topic of this show is all about finding solutions to problems that we face. The show is called Solution America, and we examine subjects big and small, problems that are really very consequential and others that are maybe not so consequential, but they do have uh, an important bearing on the lives of everybody out there. So we introduce you not only to the problem, but to the folks who are out there trying to work on solutions to come up with ways to solve those problems. And today we've got three important things to talk to you about. We're going to talk about extending the life of your home computer. We're going to talk about young voters and ways that they can have a, a louder voice this election season. We're also going to talk about uh, back to school and a safe way and maybe stylish way uh, for, for young people to carry their books to and from their classroom. So we'll talk about those three things, uh, and we're glad you're with us. I'm also logged into the chat, so you can feel free to join us and chime in. If you've got any questions or comments, we want to hear them, and I'll try to work as many of them into the show as I possibly can. You can find me on Twitter, at Rick Fulbaum. And without further ado, let's say hi to Jason Johnson, who's president of a company called iObit. And you can find them online at iobit.com. Uh, Jason, nice to talk to you. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you, Rick, for having me on today. Okay, so your company aims to find a solution to the problem your com for people out there who are worried or upset that their computer is extremely low. The solution, we've got some tips mm. courtesy of Jason. So, all right, first of all, why do computers sort of slow down? Mm, that's a very good question. So... Over time, we, we install more and more software. We, we download music and movies and documents, and, and all, that, all that activity um, bogs down the computer. It makes it slower and, and, and perform less, uh, less efficiently for us. And so people would typically get a message that would come up on their computer. If they don't notice that the computer is not functioning as well, they, uh, I remember when I had a, a PC uh, that I would get a little note that would, say, that would tell me, a little pop-up note that would tell me that my memory was running low and that that was one of the things I could do by sort of helping out, maybe deleting files that uh, I didn't necessarily need that might speed up the computer. Is that right? That's right. So, so deleting unnecessary files is, is one of, of multiple things you can do to try to extend the life of your PC and, and uh, maybe put off pur purchasing another PC, which is what a lot of people do. They, 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 it gets slow and they just, just go buy a brand new one. But in these economic times, of course, that's not the, you know, the easy thing for many of us to do. Let's go through a couple of the tips that you're providing for folks today. Uh, the first one is to keep your hardware in a clean and cool environment. Why is that so important? Yeah, so, so the, uh, the, the mechanisms inside the computer, the, uh, the processor, the, uh, the memory, the hard drive, uh, these are very heat sensitive components. And uh, we often find PCs you know, underneath desks and uh, covered by books, surrounded by pillows. And, and the more heat that the, is, is con, con, constraining those components, uh, the, the, the less likely they will perform well. And the closer they are to their, to their failure time, these things will fail over time if they, are, if they are confined by heat. The next tip that you give is to clean out, and we talked a little bit about this, clean out old registry files, cookies, mm -hmm. uh, temporary files. Where do you find this stuff on your PC, Jason? Yeah, so uh, as, as you surf the Internet, you're downloading uh, pictures that are stored in your temporary Internet files cache. You're, you're downloading cookies. Uh, you're, 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 you're downloading content that, that sits there on your hard drive. And you, you can, from time to time, manually go and, and remove that, that, that content yourself. Or you can use software that will do that for you automatically and perpetually. What do you think about external hard drives? For folks, you know, these days everybody's got some kind of an MP3 player. Uh, everyone's taking digital photos that take up a lot of storage space. Do you recommend to people maybe go get an external drive where you can store all that stuff and not have it sort of bog down the hard drive on your computer? Well, it's a very good question. Um, uh, it's interesting because many of the computers people have purchased in the past few years have very large hard drives. You know, they, have, they have very, very good capacity. And um, uh, what, what, what turns out, if we just clean them up and just maintain them, we actually can get a lot more files on there. But, of course, if you're shooting really large pictures and, and have very large music or movie collections, an external hard drive is a very convenient and, and fairly inexpensive way to expand your capacity. Defragment your hard drive is another one of your tips. What does that mean? 
Yeah, so, uh, you know, a hard drive is just like any other thing you organize, maybe your, your desk at work. And as you, as you get more and more documents and they clutter your, your desk at work and you shove things in drawers, it becomes more and more difficult to find things if they're not organized, you know, carefully. And so there's this thing called defragmentation of your hard drive that basically goes through your hard drive and reorganizes everything in a nice, efficient way so that when you go to access that program or that document, it, it can, your computer can find it very quickly and open it very quickly for you. But we need to do that on a regular basis, again, either manually or using software to do it for you. Uh, speaking of software, there uh, is also software that's sort of security, spyware. A lot of people will subscribe to these things. McAfee, of course, is one of them. There are a lot of other ones on the market that will scan your computer and look for any malware or viruses that are out there. And that's got to be an important thing, too, right? Absolutely. In fact, McAfee did a study earlier this year that said uh, one in five PCs do not have any kind of malware software protection. That is, that is those 20% those of PCs are completely unprotected from any kinds of out, outside threats that may enter the computer, viruses, spyware, uh, things that can cause quite a lot of damage. It used to be that Apple computers were, were the favorite of some because it was thought that they were sort of in, impenetrable, that, that these, these malwares and, and viruses couldn't get their way onto uh, a, an Apple computer. Is that still the case? That, that is actually not the case anymore. I, 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 I've seen recent studies which shown that the, the Mac OS is becoming uh, uh, more and more prone to these types of threats like any other PC. And so the, the software titles uh, to protect Macs are, are coming out on a, on, a, on a weekly basis almost. Um, a lot of times a computer um, company will send out some kind of a patch that you can download, a security patch or something that they've updated, and you have to click on it and make sure that, uh, to make sure that your, your hardware is up to date. Uh, you recommend mm. people do that, and what tips can you give to folks? Because I understand that there are some viruses out there that try to mimic the look of these patch updates so that people think that they're actually clicking on something from their computer maker when, in fact, they're actually allowing a virus onto their d computer. That's right. That's exactly correct. Uh, these 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 uh, these nefarious characters out there uh, with 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 certain websites will try to get you to click on things that uh, if you click on it, uh, it will in fact cause cause harm. It either may harm your computer or it may take some of your personal information. So uh, again, having software that um, that that that. that is regularly being updated to watch out for these types of uh, websites, and and that is in fact why, as you mentioned earlier, that's you know this software, including uh, our software, Advanced System Care, is 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 needing to be constantly updated. And there's subscriptions. So once upon a time, we used to buy a piece of software, and and you know you could use it for as long as you wanted, uh, but it's becoming more and more common that software has this annual subscription model, so that it stays um, most up to date and most. Uh, effective at, in, in this case, protecting you. One more question, uh, Jason, and we would encourage people to check out iOvit.com to learn more about your company. Your last tip is to let your hardware rest. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, so, you know, uh, just like any other machine we have, maybe our, our cars, you know, it, it's, uh, it's, it's a machine and uh, it needs time to rest, um, just like we wouldn't leave our, our car running for 24 hours a day. Uh, leaving your PC running for 24 hours a day is is not in the best interests of of those components. So uh, it is good to uh, to shut down your computer from time to time and give it a chance to cool down and rest uh, in between usage. Jason Johnson is the president of iObit. You can find them online iObit.com on Twitter. Their handle is at iObitSoft. Good to talk to you, Jason. Thanks so much for the helpful information. My pleasure. Thank you, Rick. And we got a comment here from uh, someone in the chat room. Can you read this? If you want to extend the life of your PC, then you need to back up the entire hard drive to include the operating system on a bootable external hard drive. So that's a tip from 